Welcome back to Talkville. Tom Welling is here. Ryan Tejas is here. I am here. I'm here. Uh, this is Talkville. This is the Ultimate Rewatch Podcast. We don't have to tell you. If you're here, this is already midway through season two. We, you know what we're doing. We're watching the episodes. We're reviewing them. Sometimes people think we shit on them. But, you know, but we also praise many. We love being a part of this show. It was an honor. It was an honor. We're grateful. But we're being real with you guys. We don't want to be just like every episode's great and we love it. And because we're trying to be objective here. And, you know, Ryan completely shit on it last time with the half a rose. <laughs> um, I did. It was our, my fault. Our socials are Talkville Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, and at Talkville Pod on Twitter. It's very important that you follow us. It's just good for awareness and getting other people to listen and watch. You can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you know, look, this is very time consuming. It's you, know, you got to watch the episodes and Bryce and, and Jason, the work is incredible. Tom and I just have to come here and kind of talk, you know, but ultimately, uh, you know, we've got a big production here and um, we're, we're new still. And, um, you know, patron is really saving us. So if you want to save the show and keep it on, if you want to join patron and get your name shouted out, uh, it would help if you don't just keep watching. And that's all we could ask for. And that's, that's actually the best we could ask for uh, you watching and listening. So, we thank you. I'm, I I want to say I'm really looking forward to this episode because I'm pretty sure you've never seen it until this time, and there's a lot of Lex in this episode, which I like. Yeah, we'll get into that. Uh, also, look, you didn't get a chance. You got to go on the hotline, and that's 213-JET-CUTE, J-E-T-C-U-T-E, and leave a message. You guys have been really good about leaving short messages, and the questions have been great. We really appreciate them, and it's fun to sort of like go, oh, I didn't see it. Because you guys are smart. It seems like the watcher, the viewers, the listeners, they know the show and they have like some great ideas. It's not just like, oh, you're not in the industry. You couldn't possibly know what you're talking about. But their, their insight is pretty incredible, wouldn't you say? Yeah, there's a lot of things that come up where I'm like, oh, I wish I would have thought about that when right before we filmed it. <laughs> yeah, I think but. that too. I think that too. Uh, the Talkville website for merch and stuff is awesome. I see people wearing it at cons, like shirts and hats and mugs. And we've got some cool art that's running out um, that you can get uh, autographed by me and Tom. There's only a limited supply left. Go to talkvillepodcast.com. And um, also, um, that's really it. If you want to also, my podcast is inside of you. And if you're here for Talkville, you could watch me interview people like Tom and uh, Kristen Ritter and J.K. Simmons and we talk about mental health, and if you want to support me, that'd be awesome. But uh, right now, support this show. J.K. Simmons was great. I listened to that one, too. I think I listened to about three episodes in the last couple of days. Uh, all right. Without further ado, let's get into it. Season 2, episode 15. This is Prodigal. Uh, title, Prodigal, aired February 11, 2003. Greg Beeman, director. Um, love Greg. Uh, as you know, in fact, we're trying to get a show going where Greg would direct it, and he loves the show. So hopefully, we might do crowdfunding. You know, if that financier doesn't work out, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make the show, Tom. Um, writers Brian Peterson, Kelly Satters, who we love, guest star Paul Wesley, Vampire Diaries as Lucas Luther. Synopsis: A prodigal son returns to the Luthers, forcing Lionel and Lex to use him as a pawn in their game of chess for control. At the same time, Clark attempts to have a job. I I had some things in this episode that bothered me. But I, I like some well, things. Well, there's the big, one of the biggest reveals that will ever happen in Smallville to me happened in this episode. I was very happy to see it because I didn't see it coming. And I use the word see a lot in that sentence. I think that he's going to say, and I think it's true, is I was <laughs> blind, but in the last <laughs> few days, I'm not blind anymore. Like, I don't think he saw Clark. You think things. he's amazing grace? <laughs> I, think I was he got blind it. and now I can see. I... <laughs> I think he, he got, got his, no, it slowly comes back. It came back. Or it came back and he's like, oh, wait a second. This, this can work for me. I like I'm that gonna scene too. I'm going to continue being blind for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into that scene. I thought it was a great scene, but also they milked the shit out of it. It was like too much. <laughs> it was like, okay. Well, when you think about it, it was episode 15, of the, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mid, mid, middle of the season. Like we're getting, we're getting close to the end. Like they need like a big reveal. So like, I think. At that point in the season, I think it's a, yeah, you have to milk it. No, I mean milking I also, it in that moment. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I also think they, they did a double reveal. And, and obviously we're going to get there. There's the thing that's thrown at Lionel and he ducks. And then later Lex says, how do you know he's holding a gun? I thought if they just got rid of the ball thing and it was just Lex. That would have been more impactful. And Lex going, how do you know he's holding a gun? That would have been 
boom for yeah, me. Yeah, I agree. Anyway. It was like the double whammy. Like you want Lex to figure it out. Like you son of a bitch. Yeah. This episode begins in an underground casino as we see a young man using surveillance and a pager to help him cheat his way through some high stakes poker. The operation is uncovered and the man barely escapes gunfire from the disgruntled thugs of the casino. They did a good job making this look like Chinatown or wherever they were. Um, it seemed dirty and kind of, you know, uh, it was fun. Uh -huh. What are you looking at? I'm going to Google Edge. It's Edge City, right? Edge City, which I think was in the comic books, right? Yeah, Edge City in D.C. I'll, I'll look it up. That's where Lex got in trouble when he was younger. Yeah, he got in trouble in Edge City. Before the man is caught and killed, we see Lex Luthor emerge from a limo to lend a helping hand. He tells the guy to get in the car and introduces himself as his brother. The man escaping is L Lucas Luthor. All right. So I'm going to have a book. couple questions for you this episode. This is like me calling in. Uh, this question is, is for Michael. Uh, when you were doing the scene in the alley and you got out and there were rain towers and it was raining on you, how much did you hate that? And how many times did you ask if the rain was really necessary? Um, I I probably said the rain is the rain. Why, why is it raining? It's cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, my makeup smearing. So reapply it. Um, <laughs> I felt like, I mean, look, it's TV, but I felt like it's that moment. It's like, I'm your brother. Um, yeah, I got these guys chasing you and they take this dramatic moment and it's like, dude, get in the car. And as they're driving off, he says, what are you, who are you? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm your brother. But I, it's just, it's weird. I guess. I don't know. It was fine. It was fine. I let it go. The crazy lady's kid from <laughs> lineage who Lionel used to falsify the Clark adoption is Lucas. Back oh, I in didn't small, realize Clark that, enters that was the, the connection. Talent and talks to Lana about getting a new job. Lana's hesitant to hire someone who constantly flakes, screws her over but ends up putting him in the running with other applicants. We, I think this story is just kind of stupid. It was, it, it was force forcefully awkward. The rose was still in the trash. <laughs> it was still perfectly red. Yeah. It just <laughs> happened. It's like, why would Clark want to ask her for a job there after all that? Chloe, Chloe's still in the uh, hospital. It's like, we're, are we watching the episode from before? Or do we have any kind of, <laughs> Uh, we cut to Metropolis and see Lex Luthor and his brother Lucas surprising their father, Lionel. Lionel shocked and overjoyed to see his long lost son. Lucas, not so much. And Lex is looking to use Lucas shares he will inherit to buy out Lionel. Small beat in the scene where Lucas looks at blind Lionel Strange as he pours a glass of water. I didn't notice that. Now, listen to, there's something in this episode where Lex is actually doing exactly what Lionel does. He's actually behaving just like Lionel. Now he believes it's for a better cause, but Lionel also believes it's for a better cause. He's everybody's fighting over these shares so they can get rid of the other person. It's the same. They're both doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, what's funny. They're <laughs> fighting over something that just seems so intangible. That just seems like I just didn't give a shit. I want these shares. I want to own this. I want to, it was just, it just didn't seem like it's, it was it held a lot of weight to it. Did, did you guys feel that way or you were fine with it? I, I found myself believing in it that this is a big thing between Lionel and Lex. Okay. I, I, I let myself believe that. Yeah. Maybe I'm just close to it. I don't know. I've, I've never owned like a conglomerate. So, I mean, I imagine shares are important for people who, with a lot of money and power. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All I'm right. just a guy. Yeah. Back I at the camp. Here. Let me call let me call Elon. Let's see if he'll pick <laughs> up. <laughs> Back at the camp farm, we podcast. see Clark and Pete draining some uninterrupted shots. As Lex and Lucas roll up in a convertible, oh, they're playing basketball. Clark has a strange reaction to meeting Lucas, and the guys try to break some of the tension by shooting hoops together. Lucas challenges Clark to a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Clark was full of brawn and eventually ends up hurting Lucas accidentally with his steel-like arms. I thought that was cool. So this was fun because one of the things that, that I remember being ad-libbed was as Lex leaves, there's this quick beat where Clark asks for the ball from, from Pete, and it's like an alley-oop thing and it goes in and I'm like, and I remember being like, that was just something I did. I just was like, give me the ball. And Sam's like, boom, because we would sort of shoot around in between takes until everybody was like, stop, you're in the way, you're, you're making too much noise. But all that basketball stuff was always fun. And by the way, Clark didn't hurt him. The kid hurt himself trying to hurt Clark, just mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. He's like, what was on your arm, dude? Lionel returns to Smallville to tell us something that he has has frozen his counts and is planning to fight against Lex's buyout. We then learn that Lucas has flipped sides and has joined forces with Lionel against Lex with no home. Wow. Yeah, pretty neat. We covered a lot of ground pretty quickly there. I mean, 
I think this also speaks to what you were saying. Like, I don't think I did I quite understood what was happening with the shares so much. So then exactly. I, I was, so I didn't care. It was, yeah, I was just fighting over the over Lucas. Is really what it's about. Once yeah. again, I was just like, I want to focus on relationships, and it's just like, oh, okay, there's that. They're playing these stupid games with each other, and they're trying to. It just seems like okay, all right, okay, I get it. I don't get it, but I get it. It's fine. With no home to return to, Lex shows up at the Kent's doorstep. This is the most ridiculous thing of the episode. This, this is absolutely asinine, and I remember it. So he loses everything. Okay, <laughs> this billionaire kid, and he doesn't have. Two hundred dollars to get a hotel for the night. He can't sell his car that was probably bought with cash. He can't. He's got no money in his safe. He's a billionaire, and he has to go to the Kent Farm to do effing errands for Jonathan Kent. I okay, was just so live it. Let me. I can maybe help you out a little bit here. Only so you don't get too upset. Um, ultimately, what this story is about is Lucas, when he says to Clark in, in the basketball scene, what if you we were a Luther and and Lex was a, was a Kent? And Lex would be a bald kid in flannel and Clark would be in Metropolis and it would be very different. And I think this is, they're trying to, to get into this because I felt the same way until the end of the episode when Jonathan says, Lex, you would have been a great farmer. And I was like, what? Oh, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to put someone in someone else's shoes a little bit. But I think you're exactly right. Lex coming in there. I mean, you literally couldn't even say it. Lex couldn't even say, Where's his can pride? I stay here? I mean, the first thing he does is go, oh, I'm going to go stay with the Kents. <laughs> he could probably talk to a million girls will take him in for the night. Yeah, where's or, your doctor friend? There's someone. I mean, maybe he just doesn't have any friends. I'm calling Al. I'm pissed. This is a good owl moment. You're on Talkville. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the third host of Talkville. <laughs> Fourth. Hey, listen to this. We're what we're doing this episode called the uh prodigal, right? Prodigal, right. I I just have yeah, go ahead. The son the son this, returns this, this, this Lucas. Your, your give him a little comes. backstory. Yeah. Brother comes okay. back, Lucas. Um Okay. My biggest problem of this is one thing. Okay. Lex going to stay with the Kents after he has nothing. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, he's a billionaire. He's got a safe. He's, he's, he, I mean, at least the first couple of weeks. He, and why would it be the Kents? Because <laughs> what Lex really wants is a family. And all the money in the world can't buy you a family. Oh, good oh, one. Oh, he's got you there. Snap. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't want to have to build another set, but mostly A. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it just, it was That's weird funny. that all of a sudden he answers it. I was like, Lex, hey, I need a place to stay. And Jonathan's like, yeah. uh, it's just, it was just a little awkward. I'm like, come <laughs> on. And, um, and you know, we're trying to, we're trying to decipher. I sound like almost, well, we're trying to decipher. It's like, we're doing this whole show and like, um, but how long do you think, I mean, do we really know, do we keep it ambiguous? Is that what your thing was with Lionel's blindness where we sort of just saying, did it slowly start to come back? What did he see? What didn't he see? Were you tr trying to leave it like that? I think at the time, I don't remember exactly. I think at the time we were trying to keep it ambiguous and then, and then be able to like, what exactly, what did he see? What didn't he see? And it, and it gave us, I think it just sort of added to his, you know, kind of mystery, but also added to a sense of danger. You know, wow. What, what cards is he playing close to the vest that, he, that we're not seeing? This episode of Talkville is brought to you by Better Help. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash talkville and get on your way to being your best self. I don't know how many people I've talked to, but it seems like it's part of the norm now that people are talking to therapists. Tom, you have a therapist. I have a therapist. Ryan has a therapist. It's important to talk to people. 
it always seems to be helpful. And sometimes, you know, I'm a little like, I don't feel like doing it, but sometimes we talk about that and why I feel that way. But every time after a session, I just, I just feel better. I feel like I understand myself and I, I feel like I, I, I'm given some tools to help me go forward. Yeah. It helps me a lot with motivation and like, it's like, what are you doing? Well, I just sit in bed and I get anxiety or we get out of bed that these are, I mean, but there are things that they, they, a lot of insights they have that really, really help me about so many different things in my life. Getting to know yourself takes time, reflection, and often assistance like you'll get from better help. No doubt life comes at us fast and we aren't always prepared to answer challenging questions or face uncertainty. We need someone to talk to, someone to listen and to help us sort through options to possibly eliminate obstacles that prevent us from personal fulfillment and happiness. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on a journey to self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's online, convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TalkVille today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TalkVille. Did the network... So the episode before, which I didn't love that much, was... I gave it half a rose, but it was called which Rush. It was called Rush. Rush. Was that, the, was that the Pete and the drag racing one? Yes. And I just felt like yeah. we sort of saw this in Nicodemus and it's already second season. And it's like, it just seemed like everybody's like, and Ryan, who's like more of the outsider and he likes stuff a lot more than, you know, I do, but, um, right. but he's more forgiving and I like a lot of stuff, but he is more like, I just, when we get into those moments, it's kind of like, seeing those people like that i know it's fun for the actors and then we know it's going to be resolved in about five minutes <laughs> you know is oh, it one the the, per, the the personality change episodes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i i think i think that was something i'll, I'll be honest it it always because you know crypto you know we have different kinds of kryptonite that did it and so look I, I think it was definitely a a you know something we had on our tool belt that we would that we would go to. And I think sometimes cause it was just fun. I don't think they always worked. I don't think that one worked, but you know, when they did work, they, you know, like Onyx and Nicodemus, and Nicodemus was great. Nicodemus, which yeah, I think Nicodemus was, was for us. And again, you know, I think I said this before, you know, season one is kind of that discovery and the show tells you what the show can and can't do in some ways. And for whatever reason, sort of personality switches and doppelgangers, for the most part, I think if you looked across the, 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 you know, 10 seasons, those episodes, I bet the batting average was pretty good. You know what I mean? It was better than, than most. And I, but right. sometimes, you know, you needed a good concept, like the one where Clark and I think it's in season four where Clark and Lionel do like a body transference, thing. transference, transference, which My I think favorite. that one's fantastic, but you know, Tom's great. And, and, and John was great, you know? So it's just, you know, I, th I think I think they can work. So I think it, again, when you're doing 22, when you have yeah, you know, you want that's a what variety I said. of episodes, it was just it, it, and sometimes it allowed you like in that one to people walking in different shoes. So it gave you a different perspective. It gave the characters a different perspective on the other characters as well. So I, I love that's, it. That's why. We, yeah. What's your favorite episode of season two? Do you remember? Oh, mine is Rosetta. Rosetta. Yeah, which right. you I don't think you've gotten to. No, that. we're on episode fifteen, so we're on, we got about seven left. So I think Rosetta's yeah. coming. I think that was a James Marshall episode. That was James Marshall, and then yeah, that was the the Chris Reeve episode. So I think that was my that one and and Red. I I loved Red. So because I think again, it was just such a. I mean, Tom just knocked it out of the park, and that was such a you know. Again, you're like, oh wow, this this was just it just came together, and it was so much fun. So, well, Al, I probably mean, probably I love that you said that yeah. we, we went through red and Jeff Loeb, we had him as, on this podcast and he, he told us a lot of cool stuff about that episode and how it came about. Yes. Yeah. I heard it. I, I listened to it. Yeah. That was great. Oh. He's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was good. I, was like, I was like, Jeff's got a good memory. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, dude, we, yeah, we love you. We always love calling you. We love it when nice. you answer. I know you're a busy man and, uh, thanks for, uh, answering the phone. No worries. All right. Take Bye, buddy. Guys. See ya. Bye. You know, you can't buy family. Man, he he won that conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was awesome.
<laughs> the idea of the Kents raising Lex gets realized in some sort of way. The next morning, we find the Kents getting ready for the day and Lex working in the barn to earn his keep. Jonathan is still wary of uh, wary of Lex's proximity to his family's secrets on the farm. While one Luther is hard at work, we find others shacking up in Lex's office playing video games. Lionel interrupts him, concerned that Lucas has not signed over his shares as he's promised. Lucas is reconsidering the deal, feeling the $10 million payout is a little cheap. That bastard. Um, Lucas agrees to sign the documents and writes, bite me. He notices Lionel's shocked reaction to this and decides to test his blindness by throwing a pool ball at his head. Lionel reacts by dodging and reveals his hand. Blind Lionel is not blind anymore. Dun, dun, dun. Did you like that moment, Ryan? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's funny because Tom had sort of been mentioning this like the entire time we've been yeah through all these recordings yeah. and i think i think lionel can see it. and i you know i have no idea uh, I, didn't, I didn't remember so. um i mean it's a big reveal I, I i i wish i could say that i was sort of laid down groundwork to be right the whole time i didn't i don't think i ever saw this episode before i just watched it for us uh i didn't know it was gonna happen i was so i was happily surprised and i was like yes i told you Later at the talent, Lana shares the great news with Clark. He's hired. As Clark receives the news, Lucas barges in, shares that he is the new managing partner of the coffee shop. After a tip from Chloe, Clark pieces together that Lionel is not only behind Lucas being sent away, but also him found, being found. I, I thought there was an opportunity where, where Lucas could have been a little more um, interested in Lana and not very professional the way Lex has been with Lana. It would have, you know, if he'd have been a little creepier, to her, I, I, I don't know. I gotta, it wasn't enough that he was just coming in there and taking over. I think he should have been like, oh, who are you? That would have just made it even creepier. Again, I wonder if instead of the stereotype, badass son, criminal, this comes into their life. It, he's such a con man. But what if he played it like he was actually a good guy and going against the grain? I always feel like characters yeah. are more interesting when they don't fall into what's written. Yeah, it could have been fun if if you had found him and he wasn't such a rogue or a rakish yeah. sort of fella. If you just found him in school, like maybe trying to struggling to get by, working at a restaurant and just being and Lex coming in and being like, "Come on, you're coming with me." But then again, for television. Yeah. How exciting would that have been to watch? I agree. They, they made him James Bond in the opening scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He shares this info with Lex, who learns once again that Lionel has been playing chess with the entire situation. Lex takes the info and confronts Lucas in the Luther manner. Lucas acts defiant, and Lex goes on to make vague threats involving the people Lucas scammed in Edge City. Lucas takes mm -hmm. his anger for Lex out on Clark by going to the town and demanding that Clark be fired. Um, the scene in the um, mansion, I you know... I kind of liked. I kind of liked the way I played it, sort of messing with them, and Courtney like, "Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah, cool, great, yeah. Well, this is what's going to happen to you. Yeah, I heard about this stuff without you know without being intense and without it's just more of a playful. Yeah, buddy, of course. And then leaving him like, wait a minute, I don't yeah. think this is good. I kind of like yeah, that. It, it was cool because you were like, oh, I see, you got it all figured out. Good for you. That's that's great. Well, you know, maybe think about this. You yeah. know what I didn't like? I didn't like the, really the way it was shot. It was very blue. I'm colorblind, but like a lot of the scenes, like in the offices and stuff, it just seemed very like in the Luther core or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seemed very. Well, I'm know. actually watching the scene right now. It just timed up perfectly. As as you walk in, there are blue lights that. Lucas had set up so he can play his video games Maybe better, and then it. he it just was very like, and he's and he's working out and stuff. But it it it, it shot very warm because he's got his shirt yeah. off and he's sweaty. I don't know, it and jumped out at other stuff. It jumped out at me. I don't I don't yeah. think it was necessarily shot badly. I just think there were some moments where I was like, wow, this is really too much right now. It's not. It doesn't feel right. But um, so Lana stands up for Clark and Lucas says he's determined to destroy the Talon. As the two guards argue outside the back alley of the shop, we see a hitman from Edge City emerge on a motorcycle and try to take out Lucas. Clark uses super speed to knock out the attacker, deflect the bullets in mid-flight. I thought this was really cool, especially if you think about the um, 
the effects and stuff from back then. Um, we haven't seen this before where he's got to do one thing really. And the, I mean, we have maybe, but this was, it just was different. He throws this guy off the bike. He does this. He grabs him. He runs. He, it, yep. it seemed kind of complicated and cool. What'd you guys think? I, 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 I remember trying to figure out how to knock those bullets down like, like as it. a team. And, and like, well, if I'm running this way and the bullets are this way, do I, and just, I remember like, there was probably like 10 people there being like, nah, that doesn't look good. Or that looks, okay, do that. Yeah, do that. See if that works. And it ended up being this backhanded thing. But um, yeah, we had to figure it out on the day because written, it's like, oh, he runs, he stops the bullets, but uh, the bullets are like behind me. It was awkward, but I think we did a good job. Did you ever feel like, like when you're like when you're doing these things for the first time, these sort of stunts slash effects, like was it easy to just let it go when they're trying, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And you're like going, oh my God, I hope that doesn't look cheesy. I hope I don't look like a jackass. Were you, did you, did you um, let it go or did you think, oh my gosh. That's a very good question. I, I think I think I did just trust the people around me that I was like, please don't make me look stupid. And they were like, okay, we won't. And I'm like, if I'm doing something that looks stupid, just tell me. Because, you know, and I and I, I never felt like I was really getting put out there. Like, I can't remember a time when I was ever like, oh, this is just going to look horrible. Uh, we, had, we had a good team. Good. The next day, as Lucas is recovering from the attack, Lionel tries convincing him that Lex put the hit out on him during the shift at the Talon. Chloe shows up to tell Clark how the hitman who tried killing Lucas mysteriously died in jail. Clark becomes suspicious and decides to leave mid-shift in front of Lana, his boss. This has got to be the 10th time Clark has flaked on Lana during the series. On his way out of the Kent farm, Lex stops by the barn to thank Jonathan for his hospitality. Shockingly, Jonathan thanks him for his work around the house and says, you know, you did a lot of shit that I wouldn't have my worst enemy do. You cleaned out the ass of a few cows. You uh, <laughs> drank pee from a donkey. You really did everything. No, he didn't say anything. I didn't even that. ask you to do that. You just did it. You just did it. And you'd be a great farmer, Lex. This can reconciliation, reconciliation lasts for about five seconds before Lucas walks into the barn, pistol whips Jonathan, and kidnaps his brother. <laughs> Later that night, Clark barges into Luther Manor and questions Lionel about Lucas being found and his hitman being killed. Lionel dismisses any accusations and delivers the sleaziest line, send my regards to your mother. He says that line in a really cool way. He didn't milk it. Uh, Clark leaves and overhears Lionel receiving a frantic call from Lucas who has kidnapped uh, Lex inside offices of Luther Corp in Metropolis. Lionel shows up to his office, finds Lex tied up to a chair, Lucas pointing a pistol at his brother. Lionel urges Lucas to put the gun down and Lex asks him how he knew a gun was pointed at him. Yeah. Lex is irate that his father has been lying to him. After this revelation, Lucas gives Lionel a pistol and tries to make him pull the trigger on Lex. Lionel refuses to kill his bald son. <laughs> but once he regains control over the situation, he has no problem pulling the trigger against Lucas. The only problem being that the gun Lionel holds is filled with blanks. That was cool. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that. All blanks. Lex says checkmate and leaves the office with his brother. Yeah, that was a big surprise to me. Um, it also reminded me, I feel like there's a lot of scenes in this episode with a lot of different characters. There was a lot of a lot of people, a lot of scenes. Um, it was moving very quickly, but that was a bi another big surprise to me. The, the blindness being revealed and the gun being blanks. I didn't see coming. I don't understand why, I'm still confused about the episode of why Lionel or why um, Lucas joins with Lex. Why was that? Just to, for the shares? That's what I thought. And ultimately, Lex showed him that Lionel would kill him. He doesn't care about him. Mm. He, he's not going to be his family. Yes, 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 yes. Took me 20 years to realize that. If only Lionel has been shooting, had been shooting blanks while having his affair. So what's the deal here? Was this staged the whole time? If so, why knock out Jonathan? And if it wasn't, then why have a gun with blanks? In standard <laughs> fashion, the episode ends with Clark showing up at the Talon during closing time to apologize. Lana is numb to the disappointment. Back at Luther Manor, full vision, Lionel pops in to greet his son Lex. Lionel reveals he's been able to see for a few weeks and that it is amazing what people try to get away with. The conversation ends with Lex telling his father that he will look over Lucas now. It was a cool shot with the two of you guys like sitting in the chairs with the fire between you. I thought that was like a... The only thing is, do we ever revisit Lucas again? No. 
I don't think you I do. I feel like he does come back sometime. I don't know why. Um, it's just like, I don't know why we just can... I don't know. Well, I, he may have here. gone on to do uh, Princess Diaries after that or whatever vampire, that show is that he did. <laughs> the Vampire Diaries, not the Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries. diaries. <laughs> Interesting things of note, the season two DVD contains a deleted scene in which Lex gives Lucas a tour of the mansion, telling Lucas that his mother is in the Metropolis Sanitarium. After she fires oh. him, Lana reminds Clark that she too was fired from the beanery after one day, which occurred in Hothead. Hotline, hotline. By the way, you know, we have a save count. Should we start a date count so we keep track of how many times Clark bails on Lana? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Here's patron privilege. There's also a, a fun drinking game with how many times Lex says, you're my father. Oh, God. My Michael father. P., a patron, top tier patron. Thank you for your support. Uh, here's Michael P. Hey, everybody. It's Michael Pachoni from Texas. In the episode Prodigal, I found it interesting that Clark and Lex are bonding on the Kemp farm when in the episode prior to Clark and Lex are going at it, albeit under the influence of red kryptonite. I see this happen quite a few times in the earlier seasons, but do you feel Clark and Lex's relationship rebounds way too easily, or do you think this is just par for the course? Thanks again. I think it's kind of par for the course. I mean, yes, there's redundancies and things like that, but it all adds up to the final outcome. Yeah. I think we see them like, we're friends. Why didn't you trust me? You're right. I'm sorry. I'll never trust you again. Somehow he earns their trust back. It's this really volatile, dysfunctional relationship that uh is based on lies well i think as 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 our good friend zach levi said on your podcast inside of you mm. when you can understand that you're imperfect it's easier to understand and and give people grace for not being perfect themselves yeah evan Hey there, this is Evan from Olympia, Washington. We had the big reveal on this one that Lionel is faking his blindness. So my question is, Lex is a pretty smart guy. Do you think he suspected that Lionel was faking it before it was confirmed? I think he doesn't trust his father at all. So I think it's one of those things where whether he thought he was blind or not, he always has kind of one eye on him at all times. Like, he's up to no good. You know, it's like, um, I'm going to tread cautiously or whatever. Well, he, he was also respectful. It's not like you were like moving his car keys without telling him or something or his house keys and then seeing if he, if he could find them. Right. You didn't mess with him. Yeah, that's true. I could, I should have messed with him more. Oh, also, wasn't Lionel in the hospital recently? And it would have been funny if one of the doctors came out and told Lex, hey, by the way, he's not really blind. <laughs> no, I think he was though. I think he was he's, blind because Lex would have gone to the doctors. He would have said, what's up? We'll get a sight back. We don't know. You know, I, I definitely, I think he was what, blind. Did it, So it just came back for this episode? He's yeah, been well, slowly getting his sight back I this think whole his, time? I think th sometimes you get your sight back. Things have happened like that. I don't think he was not blind or he would have seen the ship and all these other things. There's no effing way. Here's Leanne P. I can't even remember how he got blind. It's been so long. He fell off that. During the storm. Yeah. Oh, that's right. One of the many times he's been, he's fallen. Leanne, what's your question here, darling? Hey, guys, it's Leanne from Sacramento. So Paul Wesley and later Ian Summerhalder and Jensen Ackles all went on to star in other WB slash CW shows. Was this the network norm? Thanks, guys. Bye. Um, No, I think that if they like somebody and, you know, they thought, oh, they, you know, let's put them on a show. I think, honestly, I think that if you are a really... I mean, the CW is known for casting beautiful people, young, beautiful people. And if you're a really good looking person and you do one of their shows, they're, uh, what's the word? They're um, loyal. Mm -hmm. And they'll maybe try to find something if they like you or if it works well or whatever. Um, but you still have to go through the audition process and things like that and get the part. So it's not like these guys were given these parts. I think they auditioned for them. Especially at their stage. I think members. it's it, it's a big help with one of the hardest things to do is crack into any of these networks. And so it really helps if you're able to get on a show and now you're in and they're like, oh, oh, then they get to see you. They get to see you do something on camera as opposed and it's it's such a big step beyond just the audition process. So it, it's a big leg up to just get your foot in the door with these networks is to be a guest star. Yeah. I agree. Lana. Her name's Lana. 
Hi, my name is Lana, actually named after Smallville. My brother's name is Lex, and my sister's name is Lara, named after Kal-El's mom. Um, but my question is for Season 2, Episode 15, Prodigal. And my question is, how do you think that Lex's character would change or differ if he had grown up with a brother? If he had grown up with his brother? Two things would have could have happened. One, he could have teamed up with his brother against his dad and been like, we had a shitty childhood, so let's we have each other. Or two, it could have been this competitive thing, you know, getting daddy's approval and which is the favorite son and the Ooh, prodigal son. Succession. Succession. Yeah. So good question. Well, it seemed like Luke, it seems like Lucas was played in this episode as the Lex that everybody thought Lex would be. Mm -hmm. But you played it differently. Well, also this kid, Lucas isn't smart. I got the brains. Lex got the brains. <laughs> you've got the brains. I've got, wait, you've got the looks. I've got the brains. Let's make lots of money. You know that song? Dang. It's uh, Pet Shop Boys. Katie. <laughs> Katie. Let's see what Katie's last. Well, it's not the last question. Hi, Michael and Tom. My name is Katie, and I'm from the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. I'm on my first watch through of Smallville, and a line in the episode Prodigal stuck out to me. Lex states to Clark, just remember, my father may try and rule the world, but yours will inherit the earth. What do either of you think of the underlying subtext and or foreshadowing of that line? I don't know. I thought it was a little pretentious. <laughs> I had to think about it for like five minutes after of what the hell it meant. You know, I was like, okay, but yours will inherit the earth. Okay. So you're like the a good people, good souls will inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. Isn't that it? Is that right? Yeah. It's Bible. Yeah. And I didn't read the Bible, but, um, but the thing about what was the first part of it? My family tries to so rule fine. the world, but yours will inherit the earth. Mm. It was just one of those things where it was just like, let's give Lex a smart it was a little, line. It was a little too, it was just a little much. Yeah, it was just too much for me. Too it, just, it was like, I like, you know, our friendship will be the stuff of legend. Mm. That was kind of cool. You know, he's, he's a bright guy. He's got a lot, he's well read. So I like that. That that was okay. Or um, We're just trying to make another one of those moments, I think, mm -hmm. and just trying to find a new think, way of yeah. saying it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Matthew C., uh, this is international folks that can't, I guess, leave a voicemail. I don't know why. In the episode Prodigal, Lucas Luther makes his only appearance, even though Lex says he'll take him under his wing. Do you wish he would have been returned to the series in some way? Could have made the Lex Clark dynamic more interesting. Nah. Yeah, but I don't know how. What are you going to do? Save him again from like uh, he's up to no good again. He's going to become a good person. We're just going. It would just be drama. It'd be stupid drama. CW drama. <laughs> it would. It'd be just like kid stuff. It's like, come on, man. I don't. It just wouldn't bring any. You know. They would probably do that in Vampire Diaries. Hmm. Yeah. Rosenbaum rating system. We're going to start with Ryan on this one. Mm. Um, one. I'm going one. Is that a like, and that's a a, a big one? or that, like, that is a one. A uh, mercy one. No, it's a, a mercy one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked it fine. It was, it was cool to have a Lex-centric episode. A little bummed that they're not going to bring Lucas back just like it's like why why are we, it's, it's a weird it's like probably a cast in somebody it's just a close tie to like to sort of bring for one episode just to do one thing yeah um but there were some big big moments in it um and yeah one okay uh i think it's a it's a it's in it's a one it's just a, it's just the one oh, do you guys all, i think you guys all just went frozen on me or are you just thinking no we're no. just silent oh, okay <laughs> sorry well, it's not uh, a heater because things happen. It's it's a one because <laughs> things happen. And I'm going to give it a half a rose. All right, because of a couple moments. <clears throat> Two dead. Lucas uses someone as a meat shield in the open, and the hitman dies in jail. One saved. Clark saves Lucas from the hitman. Through 15 episodes in season two, 24 dead, 26 saved. Series 54 dead, 61 saved. Ryan's favorite scene. All Does right. anyone want to guess whether or not we're going to have like the fourth episode in a row coming up next that Clark 
cancels a date for Lana. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I'm just, it'll be like four in a row, right? It's going to happen every episode to the finale, the season right. two finale. Is that right? By the way, right now <clears throat> in this season, I killed you last season. We'll just do season by season. So last season, I <laughs> won on the favorites. This season, you're oh, yeah. in the lead four to two, three ties, and three have got nobody. Nobody got three, or we both didn't get uh-huh. three. So you're up by two. So this is a big one. Ryan, this three scenes to choose from. All right. You know, you can even mix it up where you give us four scenes if you ever want to. No, come on. That's too hard. All right. All right. Uh, scene one, Lionel's vision reveal with the eight ball. That's it. Scene two. I'm, I'm calling time. it right now. That's it. Scene scene two, bullet time. Ah, oh, shit. And scene three, where the Luther brothers oust, oust. Out, Lionel. I'm going to go scene one. I think the blindness reveal. 100% it has to be the blind reveal. Easy. It is the blind reveal. Yeah. It was too easy. That's like, that's the biggest moment so far this season. Yeah. It was good. And uh, John Glover's fun to watch doing that. He always is. He's so oh, good. He's so good. I, f- I forgot to mention in this, in this episode, Clark has a scene with Lionel. And, you know, those, those were always so exciting for me because I didn't get to work with them all that time. And, and the Lionel, Lionel is so smart and so deceptive and Clark is so unknowing that those scenes were in some ways fun because I had to give up the ego that Clark was being toyed with as much as he was by Lionel, but that was the fun of it. Um, I really enjoyed working with him and well, yeah, as when, we all know. When you confronted him, Lionel had to like pretend not to see when, when he found out who was coming in the room. Mm-hmm. It was good. Yeah. I just... Again, I just like episodes that are grounded, character-driven, moves the story along, pushes it forward. And when it doesn't, when we do the things that you don't like, I don't think many people like, but where you know the characters become someone different for an episode and wrap it up. Or I ha- think a lot of people like that. That's maybe, why they did it maybe so often. some episodes like Red. And you're right. Maybe maybe Rush was just an episode last week that was just it didn't pay off. Maybe that is it's true because I did like Nicodemus a lot more. It's a little Scooby Doo ish, the last episode. Ruby Dooby Doo. Ruby Roo. <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts? Not really. That's it for the episode. Stick around next week as things heat up when we talk about season two, episode 16, Fever. No idea what this one's about, but I have a feeling there's going to be some sex and sweat in it. No? I don't remember it at all. I haven't seen it yet. It just sounds like fever. I got a fever. I'm not feeling well. I don't know. Fever for, fever for a flavor of a Pringle. What? <laughs> wow. You pulled that out. All right. Let's take the discussion online. Let us know your thoughts over at, at Talkville uh, Podcast or at Talkville Pod. Show your support by joining Patreon, if you will. Become a patron. We'll read your name after each episode and much, much more. Patreon.com slash Talkville. If you want info on merch and we can go to merch talkvillepodcast.com but the hotline number leave a message you can watch us on youtube you know where to find us if you're listening to this show we love you we couldn't do the show without you we want to keep doing it and without you we can't keep doing it ryan always no no oh. no i was wondering if you found anything <laughs> no <laughs> oh i was looking up next episode and i was reading the the blurb on it um I, it does not sound sexy actually it sounds like clark gets sick it's like a fever. Like a fever. Oh, fever. great. All right. That's it. We love you guys. Thanks for joining. Um, hey, with the good episodes come the bad or come the average. This was a little bit above average, and uh, it was still fun to watch and talk about. Uh, send your questions in. Uh, much love, Tom. Do-do-do-do-do. Always hold on to Smallville, folks. <laughs> We'll see you later. All right. We love you. This is the shout outs for the top tier patrons. Uh, look online on Instagram, Twitter, and my at Tom Welling at my, the Michael Rosenbaum for cons that are coming. You can get zooms on, on talkville podcast.com and tons of merch. And the inside of you online store has a bunch of cool merch, smallville stuff. 
like ship keys. So let's get into it. We love you, patrons. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Uh, Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Janine R, Santiago M, Leah S, Little Lisa, Thomas the Leaf Blower, Sophie M, Betsy D, Liliana A, Abby P, Ray H, Karen Apple M, Daniel B, 99 more, Lilani N, Brett G. Wait, Ole. was it Lilani or it's Lilani Lilana because that there's we li- met in Chicago? Well, there's no, Liliana. We met her in Chicago. There's Liliana and there's a Lilani. So always hold on to Smallville. Take it away, Tom. S of Hunt G, DJ Kento, G- Garrett W, Kimberly L, Tom N, Tony V, Rodolfo V, Jason W, Osama A, Lana rhymes with banana, W, I love saying that one, Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, Justin T, and Lucio, Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P, Ryan R, Jordan M, Hillary B, Craig G, Christy R, Karen P, Derek G and my dad, Joro. Richard S., Heather and Greg, Nico P., I made Talkville say, Butts, Brian H., Eric K., Clark's mom, Kristen B., Takashi M., Kevin E., Nanine W., Stephanie K., Darth Achilles, Finky, Mickey E., Stephen F., damn, who's that? Jeanette E., Deadvid, Allison H., General Zod, The Daily Planet goes to 11. Aricelli's R., Aricelli's, Aricelli's R., Big D., <laughs> Doug R., Tommy Z., Boston 68. Isabel, Coriel, Ivy, and Sam, Mr. Home Arcade, Amanda K., Jesse C., Lumberjack, mm-hmm. Claire M., D. Brown, Joshua W., Alice, be kind, please. Rewind. Karen Ira. Cool. Just remember, Karen and Ira. Karen Ira Dan M. Supremo, Leslie V., Tatiana S., Robert G., Natalia G., Julie Jules, uh, Mick Burtz, Ginger Moose, Leslie and Jordan, Christopher S., Katie B., Michelle M. Drew. Little Mike is enjoying Talkville. Brittany S. Marisol P. Veronica Q. Sebastian F. Cheryl H. Nick M. Culpa Vambut Preaks only. Preaks. Culpa There's got to be a joke behind that. Are you saying only. something that's inappropriate when you read that? Culpa Vambut like- Preaks only. <laughs> Matthew B. and David G. We love you guys. Thank you so much. And, uh, you rock. I don't know what else to say. Always hold on to Smallville. Always hold on to Smallville. We'll see you later, guys.